this guy was successful in the 50s because he had a picture with Eisenhower and the, the decor was very 1950s. This guy was, you know, in the 70s, he had a picture with, with Carter. And there was one uh, guy who had like seven folders on his desk and it said like money, legal, communications, you know, house one, house two, house three. And the secretaries all still worked for them. So this guy would come in once a week and then open these folders, sign things, look at things and file things and then leave. So that became kind of the basis of my organization skills. And when I came back to Japan, I, I did teach English for a little while, but I got into operations at Smith Barney and became you know, CEO of, of, of many investment banks and, and basically used that philosophy of, of organization uh, to help. And, you know, I had a hedge fund at one point. Uh, I came back uh, to Japan uh, and was with Barclays uh, in uh, 2007. And that's when someone asked me to play Santa Claus at an orphanage in Hiro. Uh, and apparently that land was gifted to them by the great-grandfather of the current emperor, or maybe the great-great-grandfather. So you don't think Hiro should be a place that has an orphanage, and it's right between, I think, the Qatar embassy and another embassy. But there's, there's an orphanage right in the middle of Hiro. It's called mm -hmm. Fu Fukudenkai. But then generally, you know, if they've been taken away from their families, they're there from 2 to 18 in the same home. But when you go into the homes, you hear all sorts of dialects. So they've been taken away from kid, people in Kansai, they've been taken away from people in Tohoku, so the parents don't know where they are. They don't only have orphanages here in Tokyo, do they? They are all, all over the country. There's 600 right? in the country. 600. There's three million kids living under the poverty line in Japan. So the way I Along describe with your it, parents? yeah. Okay, of course. So I describe it as three million kids coming down the river, and we've saved 33,000 in institutional care, so they get three meals a day, and 14,000 into foster care. We're still 2.9 million kids going through life in poverty. What got you involved in doing this, Michael? What made you decide to care so much? Well, I mean, someone did ask me to play Santa Claus. And when I walked into, in 2007, in Fukudenkai, my friend Richard, and when I walked in, I noticed the kids were half, a lot of them. And I was not happy, because I thought, I hope that's not the reason that they're in this orphanage, because they're not pure. Now, when you say half, they're both half white, half black, half African, half European, um, mostly half black? Well... Half Japanese is all I knew. I could tell that they were not 100% Japanese. I see. And at, okay. at the time, I didn't know. And, and to be frank, I mean, that's generalizing a lot. But what I noticed is, for example, the following summer, because we continued to volunteer there, at the Matsuri, a lot of the moms would show up, who happened to be Filipina. And like, okay, mommy's leaving now. And they're like, okay, see you later. So they couldn't keep them at home. So then you realize maybe it's an economic reason, maybe because of, you know, the job that she has, she can't keep them at home, etc. So in that case, they still belong to her and she still sees them. But in other cases, the parents have no idea where they are. And, and so then it becomes, uh, political is not the word, but I mean, it becomes touchy because you don't even want kids inside the home to know other kids' stories. And they're told not to tell each other about their stories. Thank you.